Welcome back, Petapixel viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. We are coming to you from springtime in Alberta. Look how it is. I mean, yeah, this is it. In Canada, you play with the weather cards that you are dealt. We're the only ones crazy enough to be out here, but hopefully we're gonna find some animals, although they do tend to be way smarter than we are. But we have a good reason to be out here and fight the cold, because look at this, the brand new Canon RF 100-300 F2.8, their new professional zoom lens for wildlife and sports. Can't wait. So while we're out here today, hopefully we're gonna find some animals, I don't know, but we're really gonna focus on things like the feature sets, the image quality, the handling characteristics of this lens, because we absolutely wanna also test this in a low light sports situation. So we will do that in the second part of our video and then really get down to how this thing performs in low light, especially things like autofocus performance. Let's get to it. So you came out here to the river because there's a jingoistic jackdaw nest just up there, but I don't see them today. But we got lots of socialist apology geese, so we're gonna take pictures of them instead. They're, they're sitting pretty still. They're not moving too much. So we're out here braving the elements and I've got the lens exposed because this is an L series lens and of course it's built to a very exacting standard. You can see it's snowing but it should be easily able to take this. The other thing that I want to really play with is how hand holdable is this, you know, without having a monopod, without having any support. And the first thing I'm going to mention is actually it's very hand holdable. I don't mind carrying it around. This is about 2.65 kilograms so we've got, you know, just over a knocked and a quarter. Honestly for 300 mil 2.8 that's not bad but here we're getting a 100 to 300 mil 2.8 more versatility and roughly the same weight that i would expect out of an slr based 300 millimeter f 2.8 lens but this is still a large telephoto lens right and we've got our big lens hood in here very well built this covers 112 millimeter filter threads in the front and this is significant because canon has chosen to leave out any sort of drop in filter situation in the back now that does save you a little bit of engineering certainly some weight as well but if you want to use filters not that i would with a telephoto very often like this i would have to get quite expensive 112 millimeter ones for the front this also of course has no built-in teleconverter not in this particular series of lens but being that it is an f2.8 you would absolutely be able to rock the 1.4 and two times teleconverters and still get plenty of light now here at the front we've got our customizable buttons as you'd always expect there is a customizable control ring as well fantastic zoom very easy to grip i like that and we've got a nice manual focus here as well you've got your standard accoutrements for a telephoto lens autofocus manual focus selector switch image stabilization controls now this will actually give you six stops of image stabilization with a body that has ibis like the canon r5 I'm using today. We've also got our function preset button and our focus limiter. Here we've got a tripod collar. It does have those 90 degree click stops. I really do like that. I know some people don't. I understand absolutely. If you're not on level terrain, they're kind of useless, but I do happen to like that. So it's there. This collar does have a nice rubberized grip, so you get a good handle on it, lots of clearance, but no Arca Swiss dovetail cutouts. Otherwise, you've got your LFN button here right next to the lens mount. It's also customizable. And overall, because this is L-Series, it's built very nicely. Okay, so it's very, very cold. The wind is blowing. My beautiful hair actually does keep my head quite warm, if you guys are wondering, but it doesn't cover my ears, and they're screaming right now. So let's get through sharpness as quick as we can. This is absolutely a sharp lens. I mean, Canon always make fantastic telephoto optics. At 100 millimeters, you can see here in the center at f2.8, very good detail. I mean, even on a 45 megapixel sensor, just sharp, sharp, sharp. Stopping down the lens, I just didn't see any improvement. Looking at the corners at 100 millimeters at f2.8, they're actually pretty decent. Stopping down the lens, I do notice they tighten up just a little bit. Now, looking at 300 millimeters, I was actually even more impressed. And that's really where you want this lens to be at its sharpest, generally at the longer ranges where you can use them a lot. Center, f2.8, 300 millimeters, just fantastically sharp, super detail. Stopping on a 5.6, I noticed no difference. And I also found that the corners here at f2.8, really good at 300 millimeters, shooting at 5.6, even better. I mean, it's fantastically sharp across the frame, optically just a sharp lens. Well, there you go. So. We, we set out what we wanted to do. We wanted to get some wildlife shots today, and we certainly did. But of course, this lens is not just gonna be for wildlife, it's also gonna be for a lot of indoor sporting events. So let's go ahead to do that next. 
Okay, so we're here at the Olympic Oval. We have a great opportunity to shoot some beer league hockey. This is perfect. I mean, intense action. I like that I've got a 100 to 300 instead of like a fixed 300 because there's a lot of situations where players will be close and I want to be able to zoom back, but then get them far across the rink and be able to zoom in. So I think this is gonna work out well. All right, so we had a fun time shooting some beer league hockey there. Big thanks to the Blonde Enthusiasts for letting us take their picture and the University of Calgary beer league hockey team as well. So we wanted to test autofocus, especially in a lower light situation and a fast moving sports situation. So first thing is I did switch over to the Canon EOS R3, just because the autofocusing here is more effective, more reliable than the R5. And I feel like this is the kind of body that people are gonna mate with this kind of lens more often. So this lens is driven by twin nano USM motors, very quick, very silent from near to far. It's super quick. And I was finding in the sporting situation, I mean, the eye detect works great on the R3. It was picking up subjects. It was tracking them really nicely and I didn't feel like I was lagging behind. So as far as autofocus performance goes, for what this is intended for, wildlife, sports, action, journalism, that kind of stuff, this lens is absolutely gonna keep up to the action. So there's some really nice big lights there in the Olympic Oval and this is a good opportunity to test flare. This is something I was very curious about because a lot of the Canon RF lenses I've been testing lately have actually had issues with flare, loss of contrast, and quite a bit of ghosting. The 100 to 300 f2.8, you can see her wide open. Very minimal loss of contrast, is doing a great job. I don't see any ghosting. And then stopping down, it still remained nice and clean. So that's a great result. I mean, I expected it from a lens this professional and frankly, this expensive, but I was happy to see that flare is well controlled overall. Okay, so let's talk about bokeh now on the 100 to 300. So, Certainly a shallow depth of field lens given its telephoto range and its fast f2.8 aperture. I always like to look at specular highlights first. You can see here at 2.8, we're actually not even getting that strong a cat's eye effect in the corners. It's doing a really good job. Stopping down, everything's nice and round. The specular highlights have a nice quality to them. Not really very strong soap bubble effect, no onion rings, nice and round shape. So the transitions to out of focus areas, it's beautiful, very smooth, really nice pleasing bouquet overall. So yes, we've got a very professional lens, ruggedly built L-series quality, fast f2.8 aperture, beautiful focusing motors, and optically it's a near perfect lens. So it was really nice to use. But I think the thing that impressed me the most about it is, I have a versatile zoom range, which is actually really handy for hockey, being able to pull back and forward. And yet this lens is absolutely hand holdable. I didn't need a monopod. It wasn't a pain to carry it around all day. And I think there's a lot to be said for that because that's one of the main benefits of a mirrorless mount. All of these pluses, you would think that this is absolutely a moost buy. I'm sorry, that's Jordan's joke. I want everybody to know that was actually Jordan's joke. I take full credit. Yeah, you take full credit for it, okay. The real issue here, of course, is the cost. This is a very expensive lens. I love how versatile it is, but you're absolutely paying for it. And that means this can be relegated to rental houses or you know, high echelon professionals who have the budget to get this for the sports or wildlife that they're shooting. So regardless of how you get your hands on this particular lens, if you do get a chance to play with it, I think you are gonna love it. Definitely leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. We always appreciate you joining us here. So click that notification bell and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss our future episodes. And if you're not sick of us yet, check us out on our podcast. It's the Petapixel podcast on all your favorite podcasting apps, or you can watch it on this exact same YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon with more episodes from Petapixel. Petapixel.